Hi, this video is going to demonstrate the new ArcGIS Maps SDK for Unity, which is currently in beta. This is just for demonstration purposes. I have no affiliation with either of these companies. ArcGIS allows you to work with maps and geographic information, while Unity is a game engine that allows you to add interactivity in a 3D environment. All right, so I'm just going to head over to Google Maps here and go to Thimble Islands in Brantford, Connecticut. Uh, I'm just going to right click on a GPS point and copy the coordinates. Heading over to Unity, here's the Unity prefab that the SDK comes with. I'm just going to punch in the coordinates that I had copied on the right over here. You can also set the altitude of the camera as well as the rotation values. By default, they have a couple of options for base maps here. I'm going to switch over to imagery, and now I have full access to satellite imagery, which I can fly around with the keyboard and mouse. You'll notice as you zoom in and out that the level of detail on the map changes as it loads only what is needed. The entire map database is live in this application right now, so you don't have to load specific locations. You can just punch in an area and go right to that, and it's going to load up pretty much anywhere on the planet. The terrain elevation is also included in this 3D environment. All right, so this is pretty much just looking like Google Maps or Google Earth. So let's take a look at why you'd want to have this information in Unity. The first thing I'm going to do is change the light source and the direction of the light. I can then change the skybox. And this is a set of islands, so I'm going to put a live ocean on it. I'm going to add some fog. You can also add particle systems and weather simulations. Now in order to add any other 3D objects into the scene, I'm going to bring in a 3D model and add the ArcGIS location component to that. This will anchor an object to the map relative to the real-world coordinates that you enter. I'm going to put this tower on one of the islands. You can see that it is interacting with the lighting and the shadows in the scene. You can certainly add labels or anything that you would otherwise add in Unity. And any of these objects will have that ArcGIS location component on it, or the parent of the object will have it. I'm going to turn on some UI that will track the GPS location of the camera. This includes the coordinates, the altitude, and the rotation of the camera over the map. There are a number of base maps you can use, and there are also layers that you can overlay. We'll pull up New York City's 3D Buildings, which is a layer that comes by default in the example, and we'll add an ocean to that as well. We can fly around these buildings with the controller that comes with the SDK, and you can interact with these buildings the way you would with anything in Unity by adding a collider and or rigid body. This is Sleeping Giant State Park in Connecticut. This is a good location to demonstrate the elevation on the maps. We are currently in the topographic view. I will switch over to satellite imagery. A mesh collider on the terrain is going to allow the physics system to interact with the contours of the mountain directly. I'm just going to select these tiles and add a mesh collider to them. I'm doing this in play mode, which means when I hit stop, these changes will not get saved. Here we have rigid bodies from the physics system interacting with the terrain tiles from the SDK. There's quite a bit you can do with this. I'll just turn off gravity for an interesting view. I added mesh colliders to the terrain by selecting them in play mode. Normally you would come up with a system to add colliders to the necessary terrain tiles procedurally. Or if this were a game scenario, I would probably extract that information, set up one mesh collider that's always present on the area. In that setup, the collider would be independent of the tiles. In a normal Unity project, you have a 3D space and the camera will move around in that space. In this SDK, because the environment is potentially so large, it's set up in a way where the camera always stays at zero coordinates while the environment shifts underneath it. This is why you need the anchoring components on objects so that they can shift in place with the map. By default, when the map shifts around, it's going to keep re-anchoring those objects you've added to the specific locations that you've set. For interactive objects or physics objects, you really don't want this to happen as it's going to keep resetting it back to the original anchor point. You can write some code to translate that information, or an easy method that I've found is just to have a parent container that gets the anchor, and everything inside of that container is free to move around normally. Here we see the parent shifting with the map, 
while the objects inside of it are able to interact normally without any components from the ArcGIS SDK. This demo was made using Unity's Universal Render Pipeline. The ArcGIS SDK for Unity also supports HDRP, which is the High Definition Render Pipeline, if you want to get better graphics or if you're going for a very realistic output. Currently, these tools are free to use. This Maps SDK for Unity is in very early beta at version 0.2.0. I'll put a link to that in the video description, and anyone can sign up and use it today. Hopefully this video has been useful just to demonstrate a small sample of what you can do by combining these tools. We'll just cap off this video by adding some sound effects that match each geographic location. I drive a Dodge Stray!